Hello, this is Ms. Augustine, and we are still talking about Chapter 6. So this is Chapter 6, Part 3, still talking about covalent bonding, only today we're going to delve into molecular geometry. So when we talk about molecular geometry, uh, we have to understand that the geometry of molecules is going to be dependent upon the number and the orientation of the electrons around a central atom. And so we're talking about bonding as well as non-bonding electrons. So unpaired electrons around a central atom play a very large role in determining the molecule's three-dimensional shape. And negatively charged electrons are going to repel one another. They're all the same charge, like charges repel. So electron pairs in different orbitals are going to stay as far apart from one another as possible. And again, we're talking about electrons in bonding pairs and electrons in non-bonding pairs, unshared pairs. So we introduced something called VESPER theory, which stands for valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. That's where the VSEPR theory is. I say VESPER, some people say VSEPR theory, whatever. It is based on this tendency of electron pairs to adjust the orientation of their orbitals to maximize the distance between them because of repulsion of like charges. And it depends on the number of electrons or atoms bonded around a central atom. And that gives you something that's called a steric number. And when we get to the chart that helps you with Vesper shapes, you'll see what I mean. And the bond angle that results is the shape characterized between the central atom and the atoms that are bonded to it. So the number of electron pairs will determine the shape of the molecule. And this is a little chart I like to use where we talk about the electron pairs and we talk about the orbital angles and then we talk about the shape of that molecule. So if there are only two things that are bonded to a central atom, the farthest apart they can be is linear, and that's what that would look like with a model kit. If you have three things and they are equally spaced from one another, you would end up getting a trigonal planar shape around that central atom. And we're always talking here about the shape of the things attached to the central atom. If there are four things, we end up with something called a tetrahedral shape. So here again, you see the central atom with four things as far apart from one another as they can get. That angle is 109.5 degrees. This is a trigonal pyramid with one lone pair. So there are four things, but in this case, one of them happens to be a lone pair. And so you get this trigonal pyramid shape because you can think of the fourth thing, the lone pair, being up here occupying space. So it's similar to tetrahedral. And finally, if you have four things um, attached to a central atom, you can get something called bent. And in this case, it's two bonding pairs. And we'll see in a few slides, two lone pairs in this case. So VSEPR models for two atoms or electron pairs attached to a central atom. The number of unshared pairs in this example is zero. The bond shape will be linear. And so there is your linear shape, two things attached to a central atom. The bond angle that results is 180 degrees. Examples would be beryllium chloride, carbon dioxide, and um, hydrogen cyanide. And then if we have three atoms or electron pairs with no unshared pairs, the bond shape would be trigonal planar. Again, the three things are getting as far apart from one another as they can. The bond angle then would be 120 degrees. And examples would be boron trifluoride. Um, this is a bor uh, boron trihydride and sulfur trioxide. And then if you have three atoms or electron pairs where there is one unshared pair, you get a slightly different thing going on. And you get the resulting shape is bent or angular. So again, this is an example of bent or angular. The bond angle is less than 120 degrees. 
And that's the result of this unshared pair kind of pushing things, repelling things away. So it's less than 120. And an example would be sulfur dioxide. And again, it's 119 degrees in this case. And again, this right here is the unshared pair and it is repelling. So instead of these being linear, that unshared pair is forcing it into a bent configuration. And then if you have four atoms or electron pairs with zero unshared pairs, you would get a tetrahedral shape. And again, if you want to put things, four things as far apart from one another as you can, bonded to a central atom, the shape would be tetrahedral and the bond angle is 109.5. Example would be methane. And again, if you were going to show this, um, in a two-dimensional way on paper, we use this type of structure where this little wedge shape is actually the hydrogen coming out of the plane of the paper at me. The little dotted line is behind the plane, and this one is in the plane of the paper, and this one is in the plane of the paper. Another example would be, um, this is um, dichloromethane, and this is silicon tetrachloride. And I'm not even going to name that one for you. And so continuing with the Vesper models, if you had four atoms or electron pairs um, and the number of unshared pairs in this case is one, um, the bond shape would be trigonal pyramidal. The example we like to use is ammonia, where you have nitrogen bonded to three hydrogens, but nitrogen has this unshared pair of electrons, a so-called lone pair, and that's going to change the geometry. It's going to repel these hydrogens. So the resulting bond angle is less than that for a tetrahedral shape. So it's less than 109.5. Examples would be ammonia here. And again, you'll see that this lone uh, pair or unshared pair of electrons is shown here in its own orbital. And you can see that the resulting shape of the hydrogens and the nitrogen is this trigonal pyramid shape. Um, this is phosphorus trifluoride. This is monochloroamine. Um, and again, if you had four atoms or electron pairs, and in this case, instead of one unshared pair, two unshared pairs, the bond shape would be also bent or angular. We saw a bent before. Um, in this case, it would look like this. So the bond angle is less than 109.5. And examples would be um, difluoroxide. And this would be bromine dioxide, and this is sulfur dichloride. And then four atoms or electron pairs where you have two unshared pairs. And in this case, the bond shape is bent or angular still, only in the case of water. I just show you this because of um, the fact that you have hydrogen and oxygen. Um, the previous example was something other than hydrogen and oxygen. And in this case, the two lone pairs of oxygen are able to exert quite a lot of uh, repelling power against the hydrogens. And so you end up with a bond angle of not 109.5, uh, it is 104.5. So in the previous example, I showed you that it's less than 109.5. And in the case of water, it is 104.5. Know that bond angle. And so again, this would be showing you the two lone pairs in an orbital and then the two hydrogens. So you get this bond angle of 104.5. This is a Vesper um, chart. And what it's showing you here is along here, the steric number is how many things are bonded to a central atom. And in this case, it's two things with zero lone pairs. In this case, there are three things. And in this uh, second column, you'll see one of the three things happens to be a lone pair. Four things, no lone pairs, one lone pair, two lone pairs, and so on. So you can see that you read this according to how many things are bonded to the central atom. And then whether or not there are lone pairs, zero through four lone pairs. 
And to summarize using Vesper theory to predict the molecular shape, you would draw your Lewis structural formula, count the number of atoms that are bonded to the central atom, and count the number of unshared electron pairs. Add the number of atoms and the number of unshared electron pairs around that central atom, and that total will give you your parent structure, and the shape would be derived from that chart, using that chart, determining how many things are bonded to the central atom and how many of those things happen to be lone pairs. So that is it for Vesper. For now, this is Ms. Augustine signing off.